Hey guys, this is Spencer from Mobox Graphics, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this awesome glass effect that's completely editable, completely non-destructive, and I think you guys are going to love it. I'm going to show you first how this thing is built and what we can do with it. So you see over here in the Layers panel, we have Layer Effects folder and a Background folder. Inside of this background folder, we actually have two layers in there. One's a texture layer and one's a color layer. Underneath layer effects, we actually have another folder in there called artwork. And inside of that folder is where we keep all of our uh, editable content. So for instance, we have this uh, text layer with the word glass written that we can just retype. Uh, we also, if we hide that, you can insert EPS files, PDF files, any kind of vector format. It'll retain its vector quality. It'll also have this glass effect. I'm going to hide that, and the last one's really cool. On this layer here, we can actually paint in the effect or paint out the effect just by using our paintbrush and painting in black and white onto that masking layer. So this is a super cool effect. It's completely editable. Let's get started. The first thing I want to do is go up to File, New Document, and we need to set this guy up. He's going to be, instead of inches, let's go pixels, and I'm going to make this 2560 by 1440. We're gonna do a resolution of 300 and then make sure that it's in RGB color mode. Some of the filters and effects that we're using may not be available to you if you're building it in CMYK. You can always convert to that later. I wanna get started by setting up my folder structure over here. So down here in the uh, lower part of your toolbar on your layers panel, there's a little folder icon. I'm just gonna create two folders out there. The first folder, if I double click on the name, I'm gonna label this one layer effects. And then the second folder, we'll go with background. And then this background layer here, if I just double click in the gray area, I'm gonna hit okay on that. It just creates a layer, unlocks it. Now I can hit the delete button to delete it out of there. So we just have two folders, completely empty layers. So I need to create a new layer. We're gonna work on the background first. So I'm gonna just hit my create new layer button and there it is. On this layer, we're gonna add the texture. So I'm gonna double click this and rename it to texture. What I wanna do here is actually grab my gradient tool from over here in the toolbar, and then we're gonna adjust this gradient. Now I already have it set up, but more than likely you're gonna have it be black to white on here and we're gonna want to adjust the colors a little bit. Now you see you have this gradient bar and I always forget which side it's gonna start on and if I need to reverse the gradient. Well, it's pretty easy. You read left to right. So this gradient from where we click and start it and let go of it is going to go from left to right. So I actually want to make this left side a white color and that white color we're gonna make not a pure white but maybe more of a 10% uh, black. So I'm gonna change this L on the lab to 90. That's one of the easier ways to just go between those black percentages. I'm gonna hit OK to that. And then for over here, if I double click this color, I wanna adjust this to more of a mid-tone gray. So we're gonna do 40 here, which would be about a 60% black or so. And I'm gonna hit OK to that. So now we're going from not quite white to kind of a little bit darker of a gray. I'm gonna hit OK there. And I want this to be set on radial. You guys will probably have it on linear to start with. I'm gonna make sure it's on radial and make sure you uncheck reverse because we have this thing set up to go from white to gray and that's what we want from the center out. So it's a little hard to see, but my cursor is right here in the center and I'm just gonna click and drag out to the corner of my canvas. And then when I let go, it's gonna create that sort of white to gray gradient from the center out. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. The reason we're creating this gradient and the reason I'm also not using total white is because we need something for that texture to grab onto and have the highlights and the shadows. But I also don't want it to be too dark, I don't want it to be too white. So it's kind of these mid-tones that we're working with to create that texture. So from here, I wanna go up to filter and go ahead and convert for smart filters. That's gonna allow us to edit the filters later because it creates a smart object over here out of our texture layer. Now you'll notice that your gradient icon, your cursor is like a, hey, you can't do this icon, a circle with a little slash through it. That means I can't affect this. And if I click, it'll actually tell me. I couldn't, you can't use the gradient tool because smart object is not directly editable. So let's say you wanted to go back and change this gradient later. All you have to do is double click on your layer thumbnail. And that's gonna open up that smart object. The smart objects is kinda like uh, having another Photoshop file hidden within your Photoshop file. You can see up here it actually added another uh, document and that is the texture PSB, which is, the PSB is just a large format Photoshop file in case you actually create too many layers in here. This texture comes from that layer. 
So we can now edit this gradient just like we did before. And if I hit Command S, that saves it and I can just exit out of this and that edits it over in our main document. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and take our gradient back to where it was. So we've got this smart object over here. We're gonna apply a filter to it. And that filter is gonna be found in Filter Gallery, which is just a couple down from the uh, filter dropdown. So once we open that up, there's gonna be a lot of choices in here. And we have all sorts of different, uh, you know, you can do colored pencil, artistic brush strokes. What we want is under Distort, and it's actually a glass effect. And this glass effect is pretty easy to work with. The texture that we want is the frosted texture. There's a few others like canvas and blocks that you can work with. Um, I think the frosted one creates the best sort of glassy feel. Uh, and then the distortion, we're gonna want to set that to 20, the smoothness to two, and then the scaling to 200%. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay on that to commit that texture. Now you can see it's added that texture to our canvas. And I think that this texture just gives it a little bit more, it kind of adds a little more effect to the uh, to the whole look of this of the glass texture. Now I do wanna do a couple more things. I think this is a little bit strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the opacity down to 75%. And we need to create our color layer. So I'm gonna do that by selecting the shape tool over here in our toolbar, it's towards the bottom of your tools. And from there, I'm going to click and drag outside of my canvas from one side to the other and let go. And we've created a black shape. You can see that with the black fill. There's, you can see this uh, dialog box for the live shape properties that popped out, or you can see uh, all this stuff up here. We wanna fill and no stroke. And what you can do with this shape layer, this rectangle, is actually double click on its thumbnail and you can adjust the color as easy as picking a new color. So the color that I'm going to use is 28FD90. Kind of a mint green color. I'm gonna hit okay with that. Minimize this properties panel, and then I'm gonna drag this rectangle underneath our texture layer. And we're getting a little bit through because we currently have the opacity of the texture set to 75, but this is not the exact look that I want. I'm gonna change the blending mode of my texture layer to linear burn. So that's it for our background layer. I'm gonna minimize this smart filter just to clean that up. And then I'm gonna also minimize that background folder. So we've got that all set up. It's time to do the layer effects. Inside of this layer effects folder, I'm gonna add another folder. And that one's gonna be called, if I double click here, it's gonna be called artwork. That's gonna be the folder that we put all of our editable files into. Uh, and I wanna drag this into layer effects if it didn't actually already go in there. And you can tell that it's inside of there because it tabs it in underneath of the folder that it's inside of. Let's also add a text layer inside of our artwork folder. You can find the type tool over in the toolbar. It's a big old T over here, uh, about three quarters of the way down. And I can just click on my canvas and I can begin typing. So we're gonna just type the word glass. Now, a nice bold font works very well. Um, I've got one selected here and I'm gonna set the size to 125 and then I'm actually gonna set it to be a, a white color, not a black color and hit okay. I'm gonna go back to my move tool and then select the entire canvas with command A. Uh, you can also go up to select, select all. And from here, now that I have uh, this layer selected, this glass layer selected and move tool, I actually get the uh, alignment panel up here. So I'm just gonna horizontal and vertical align that glass effect. I'm gonna deselect by going to select, deselect or command D. So we have a folder that has layer effects, a folder that has artwork. And inside of that artwork folder, we have this editable glass text layer. That's the way you want it to be set up. We're gonna go and add some layer styles to the layer effects folder first. If I double click in this blank area out to the side of the folder, that's gonna open up the layer styles dialog box. Inside of there, we're gonna add a bevel, an inner shadow, and then two drop shadows. So let's start with the bevel and emboss. All I have to do is click on this layer and it's gonna check mark that box. If it doesn't, you can actually click on the box It'll check mark that and then click on the layer somewhere to get all the options over here that we're gonna adjust. So let's start with structure. The style that we want is inner bevel. From there, we're gonna select smooth for the technique and a depth of 175%. And then the size and soften is gonna be 15 pixels on size and zero pixels on soften. Now you can't see a whole lot happening yet, but there is a little bit of a shadow on this. 
we're gonna change our text layer in a little bit and that will show all the effects for us. Underneath shading, let's do 50, 50 for the angle, uncheck global light. And then for the glass contour, we're gonna select the cone shape. If you hit the drop down arrow, you have a lot of shapes here. It's gonna start on just straight diagonal shape. Go ahead and select the cone shape and then you can select anti-aliased if you want. Under highlight mode, change this to linear dodge and we're gonna go all the way down to 10%. And for shadow mode, we'll do linear burn and we'll go all the way down to 5%. And for the highlights, I just picked straight white, and for the shadows, straight black. That sets up our bevel and emboss, so let's move on to the inner shadow. For the structure of the inner shadow, underneath the blend mode, we're gonna add linear burn, the opacity only 10%, the angle negative 50. We're gonna be using this negative 50 angle a couple of times. For the distance, zero, the choke 15, and the size five. Oh, and you can also, on the contour, just leave it as is and maybe check mark anti-aliased. You'll notice this one uh, doesn't do a whole lot, but it does soften up the edge of our uh, contour. From here, we're gonna add a drop shadow. And this drop shadow is gonna be blending mode of multiple multiply the color we're going to do all the way black so just select that down there hit ok for opacity only 35 percent angles negative 50 once again the distance will do five the spread zero and then the size is 30. this is going to be the size affects mostly that softness of the shadow so this is going to be sort of the shadow that gives it the most lift off of the page the contour once again just straight diagonal, leave it as default, and maybe turn on anti-aliased. Now to add another drop shadow, we're gonna go to effects and then down to drop shadow. That throws another one in here, and this drop shadow, it has a lot of just default parameters selected. So I'm gonna make sure once again that it's under, it's multiplied, and our color is totally black. The opacity on this one, we're gonna want to be 50%. The angle, uncheck, use global light. We don't wanna use global light at all during this. And then we're gonna go back to that negative 50. For distance, we're gonna do zero, zero, and 10. This drop shadow really, uh, really accentuates the edge of our design and kind of makes it pop a little bit more. It gives it a little bit more of a concrete finish to that edge. Once again, the contour just diagonal and we can check anti-aliased. That's it for the layer styles for our layer effects folder. So go ahead and hit okay to commit all of those changes. And we don't see a whole lot going on yet. That's because we need to go back to our glass layer inside of our artwork folder. Instead of normal on the blending mode, we need that to be linear burn. And at this point, we're really only missing one last effect and that is sort of the highlight and a little bit of shading that gives gives the glass a little bit more depth and dimensionality for that we're going to go to the artwork layer and add a layer style to it by double clicking in this area just to the right of it same way we did with the layer effects now the reason that we're adding a layer style also to this folder and the reason we even have two folders in the first place is because what we're adding here is another bevel and emboss and you cannot have two bevel and embosses on the same uh, layer kind of tricked photoshop and added two folders inside of each other so that both of these bevel and embosses will pass through each other and show on anything that we put in the artwork folder. Go ahead and check mark this one and we're gonna adjust the settings on this bevel. We're gonna start with inner bevel and smooth just like our other effects layer. For the depth, we're gonna do a little bit less. We're gonna select 150, remain uh, up on the direction, and then for size and soften, we're gonna do 75 on the size and 10 on the soften. Now this next part is probably what affects it the most. That is the angle and the altitude of, of the shading. Depending on what your object is, what the size of your canvas is, what the size of your object is, and the look that you're going for, these might be uh, slightly adjusted for you. What I found to work best for everything that we have set up here is an angle of negative 20 and an altitude of 65. And then the gloss contour on this, instead of cone shape, we're gonna actually do inverted cone. And you'll see that that actually adds sort of that shiny reflectiveness to our glass. And underneath here, if we go to, uh, if we select anti-alias, which I always do, um, and then under linear, under highlight mode, we're gonna select linear dodge, 
much, and then a white opacity 10. For the shadow mode, we're gonna do linear burn and then opacity five. Once you do that, you'll see how this sort of uh, reflects off of the surface. So I'm gonna hit okay now. We've actually finished all of the effects for our glass, but now I'm gonna show you how you can actually apply this to different types of layers. So we see here that we have the type layer and it's completely editable. We can change that to whatever we want and add multiple lines and multiple type layers inside of this folder. I'm gonna go ahead and twirl down both of these uh, effects here so that we kind of clean up everything. So you see we have layer effects, artwork, and then things inside of artwork. What can you do inside of this folder? Well, obviously you can add text effects. We showed you that. You can also add, if I go and just add a new layer in here, and then if I fill this layer, go to select all, and use shift F5 to fill this layer with a uh, with complete white. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna go and hit uh, linear burn on that. Then I'm gonna deselect everything. And you can see that it's actually got uh, the glass effect on it. It's just the size of the layer. What I'm going to do next is actually zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hit Command T on this layer, and that's going to allow me to transform it. And I'm going to go up here in the corner, and I'm going to hold Shift and Option, or Shift and Alt on Windows. I'm going to click and drag and just pull this layer all the way out. That way we don't have any of those effects bleeding over our edges. Next, I'm going to add a mask to this layer. And this mask, I'm gonna do Shift F5 to fill it with a black and hit OK. And that's gonna completely hide this layer. Let's go ahead and turn off our effects now that we can see that. And then I'm gonna click on this masked layer, grab my brush over here in the toolbar, also shortcut key B. And if I draw on this, you'll see I have a black and a white set up down here. You can click on this little icon to make sure it's uh, black and white or white and black. And this guy here will switch back and forth. So whichever one's in front is what you're painting with. And you can switch back and forth with this or by using the X key. Now that I have white selected, I can just click on my canvas here with my brush and actually create and paint right on my canvas. And then if I hit X, I can go in and remove that because we're painting on our mask over here in our layer panel. And we're just showing and we're hiding uh, the white layer. And that white layer is showing the effect. Pretty cool stuff there, pretty cool stuff. You can actually paint any kind of effect you want. Um, we can use the type layer to create the glass effect. And last but not least, I could place an EPS file, a PDF file, or in this case, I can place embedded here an Illustrator file. If we place it, it's gonna bring it in as a, a vector smart object. I'm gonna hit OK. This file is set up as white in Illustrator, which you can just go back and uh, color it white. Once I insert it in here, I'm gonna hide that to get rid of some of those artifacts that came in. Uh, once I get this in here, all I have to do is go to the blending mode down to linear burn. There we have the glass effect on top of an EPS or Illustrator file logo that's vector and scalable and editable and non-destructive. This is an awesome effect. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions, post them in the comments below and we'll be sure to follow up. You can also find me on YouTube and social media at Pixel and Bracket. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.